Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, one of my favorites, Anthony Bourdain. Last time I spoke to you, you were winning a Peabody Award. Today you're telling the story about the guy who is kind of responsible for why people like you are here now, Jeremiah Tower. Talk to me about how did this whole story about making a movie come about? Well, I, I read, I, I, of course, I'd been aware of, uh, of Jeremiah and his career and his enormous influence on the way we live and eat in America today. Uh, but I read his memoir, California Dish, and I thought, you know, it's really a crime that, that more people don't know his name and don't know more about this fascinating man and the enormous effect he'd, he'd had on, uh, on restaurants. And for various reasons, he'd been written out of history and excluded from the official record. He, he became inconvenient to the narrative, and I wanted to correct that. Why do you think that is? Because we look at the celebrity, we're in the celebrity chef culture, people like you, Mario Batali. What do you think it was about him? Jeremiah is a difficult man. Uh, he had a uh, he had a uh, uh, an explosive and firework filled rise, and when he disappeared from the scene, there were a number of people who were happy to see him go, and uh, there were also people who were still around who, you know, to the, to the victors go, you know, the victors get to tell history the way they want, and the people who remained became the sole creators. Of, 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 a, of, a, of a history that Jeremiah was at least largely responsible for. Looking at where it is today, does it blow your mind to see chefs are famous and what TV has created with this celebrity well, chef look, culture? I mean, I say this jokingly, but it's true. Until Jeremiah, I mean, Jeremiah was really the first American celebrity chef. And I think the most important aspect of that was before Jeremiah, nobody really was interested in what the chef looked like, much less wanted to have sex with him. Part of, part of the reason you went to Jeremiah's restaurant is everybody, male and female alike, wanted to have sex with Jeremiah Tower. And, 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 and by being, and, and he was apparently more often than not, not, un, not entirely unwilling to <laughs> oblige, uh, thus making things better for all of us. I mean, he made chefs fuckable. Parts, that's going to be the, the quote I use, he made Chef Fuckable. Parts unknown, man. I love your show. How much fun are you having with it and what can people expect? I saw you were just in Chicago. Yeah. What's coming up? Uh, we're this uh, coming season, it's uh, among other places, Senegal, uh, Manila, uh, Chicago, uh, and uh, uh, Noxos, the Greek islands. Yeah, my, I have the best job in the world. <laughs> and when you look at, if you had one meal you could have, the last meal, what would it be? Um, I, you know, I find if you're facing imminent death, you want to eat light. You know, you don't want a big bowl of pasta because, let's face it, you're not going to finish. Um, I think a really high-end sushi uh, meal at maybe Masa in New York or Jiro in Tokyo. And around the time that they deliver the last course, which is generally the tamago, the little omelet course, you step up behind me, bang, in the back of the head. As I, as I sag to the ground, I will not have many regrets.